These are the men and women of Beaver Valley, the bravest of the brave. They fought fearlessly for their country, their city, their community, and for the ideals we share as Americans. They served proudly in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Here now are their stories, their own experiences in their own words, the words of the heroes of Beaver Valley. For almost 30 years, two New Brighton natives, Harry Pease and Charlie Hurt, have been living similar but parallel lives. Both men were on the track and field team during their time at New Brighton High School. We both were, uh, were on a track team in New Brighton. He, I heard a lot about Charlie. He was kind of a standout uh, uh, pole vaulter. Despite going to the same school, neither of the men had ever met. Hurt entered the Air Force in 1966. Two years later, when he graduated, Pease entered the Air Force as well. Hurt was sent to Vietnam in 1967 as part of the Air Police, later called Security Police, for Tan Son Nut Air Base. Not long after his arrival in country, the Tet Offensive began. It was my 21st birthday on a sandbag bunker. The Tet Offensive was still active when I had my birthday. We, were, we suddenly went from three, eight, three teams of eight hours to two teams of 12 hours. I was stationed at a, an area where you, you couldn't go any further without stopping for inspection because there were two of us there that were letting vehicles go out onto the flight line. And of course you don't want somebody carrying a bomb or something out onto the flight line to destroy an aircraft. I remember, I remember sitting there, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, geez, what a birthday. I can't even get a drink <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we were working 12 and 12. A few months after Hurt left Vietnam in December 1968, Pease arrived in country at the same airbase to work with the same security police unit that Hurt had been a part of. And our mission was to protect the, uh, air base. the air base at, at Tan Sanut. And it was a 17 mile perimeter. And it, um, Probably what, the size of New Brighton? I would say so, yeah. It was a, big enough to be a, a, a town of itself. And it was MACV headquarters. Uh, was was on Tonsonut Air Base. It was kind of a prime target, so well protected. All the commercial airlines landed on Tonsonut when they were bringing That's right. uh, personnel in country. You went in on a commercial jet. During their time in Vietnam, both men experienced numerous, almost daily attacks from the enemy. The night that I remember was December 19th in 69, uh, and they, they shot uh, 156 rockets in on the air base, and they're huge. These rockets are huge. They're about yeah. about six feet tall. They're the huge. North Vietnamese would would carry one down, light it, let it go, turn around, and walk back up to North Vietnam to get another one. Yeah, that's right. After an especially large battle where enemy combatants were killed, Hurt was put on guard duty while the bodies were buried. And actually, Charlie, if, if I remember right, you you said they. They, what they did, they dug a, a huge ditch for a grave and pushed all the bodies in there. Yeah, Charlie, was, Charlie was actually stationed. They, they put him on security detail after the battle uh, on that site. Am on I right site. about that, Charlie? Yep. South Vietnamese Army was on the perimeter and uh, they had cement bunkers and all kinds of stuff. And we were responsible for the perimeter behind them. And when they got hit, they all ran behind us. And we were stuck there because we wouldn't leave. And uh, they started getting us things like 50 cal machine guns instead of 30 cal, um, bigger stuff to fight with. And they created a, a tower system that they sent a couple of us to school for uh, to learn how to triangulate the enemy off the perimeter and we were, I was on a, a water tower that, I don't know how tall. 180 feet. 180 feet tall. And uh, I spent uh, most of my career there uh, afterwards. I almost got shot off of it two or three times because it was all open. Pease also helped track the enemy during his time at the airbase. I worked in Alpha Sector, which was on the north side of the, uh, of the airbase. And then my last 
uh, six months when I was there. I was also there a year. I worked in central security control, which is where the guys, when they, when they called in the grid coordinates, um, we would, we had, it, it was kind of makeshift, but it, we had a, a string with a piece of putty on the end of it, and each tower had a, a round circle around it, and with the three intersected, and we got a nice intersect, we called, uh, we would call a place called uh, JDOC, Joint Defense Operations Center. They would check and see if there were any friendlies in the area, and if there weren't, then that's when the artillery came in and hit. We, we used to come back to, we, we had barracks, but they were, had just screen on the side and lap siding that went out like this. And we were right across from the helipad, mm -hmm. hel helicopter pad. Yeah. And, they, and they were they, busy they, during they, the day. All, all day long, they, they, we never, never could sleep. We, we had a movie theater and we got first, first rate movies. And they were like, what, 50 cents or 35 oh, yeah, cents? It, some it, it, some ridiculous that, figure. Yeah. <laughs> and I would go to the show to get, to get a nap to go, yeah, to, so I could sleep. That sounds I'd sit right, through yeah. two, or three, two or three movies a day, sometimes just so I could get some rest because of the heliport making all the noise. After their time in the service, both men returned home and both attended Community College of Beaver County. Both attended at different times and therefore still had not met each other. Finally, in 1974, both men were hired by the Beaver Falls Police Department and got a chance to get to know each other. It wasn't long after Charlie came on. I mean, you're just getting to know each other. And, oh, were you in the service? Yeah, I was, a, I was in the Air Force. Oh, oh you were? Me too. Oh, I was in the Air Police or Security Police. And Yeah, I was too. Did you go to Vietnam? Yeah. Where'd you go? Tan Sanut Air Base. And I said, that's where I was too. It was just, uh, it, we thought it was pretty incredulous that we you know, sir. Followed each other around. Yeah. I mean. Pease and Hurt went on to become friends and worked their way up through the ranks of the police department. Both men are proud to have served their country. Invariably, people come up to you and they say, thank you for your service. And uh, that makes me very proud. I'm, I'm proud to have served. I've, I'm one of the proudest things I've ever done. But uh, I always tell them, I said, you, I appreciate you more than you know, and you saying that. But you know we're not the we're not the ones you should thank. You know it's the poor guys that I think of those guys over there that uh, didn't come back.